Hello, welcome back. And the whirlwind, otherwise known as Charlotte, has sadly gone home now um, and taken her mini me with her. That's a uh, young Evangeline. Uh, we all had a lovely, lovely time while she was here and um, got up to quite a lot, did a lot of stuff, some of it here and out and about. Um, Susan and I have been taking it easy for the last day or so, just, you know, chilling. <laughs> But we've got to get it back on with the work. So, where were we? Oh, yeah. Well, that's done. I've got all of them out, so I'm happy with that. And I thought I'd give it a quick rake over the surface just in case. And I found two more tiles just under the surface. So I think what I'll do, I'll, I'll just quickly rake it over again just to make sure. And I'll do it really gently because under here, there should be, the dome should be covered with uh, layers of clay. And I don't want to damage that in any way, but I think I've got quite a few inches before I get to it. Uh, but I just want to see what I've got. Um, the more I rake, the more I find. <laughs> um, a, a lot of you suggested that this might have been placed here deliberately to insulate the oven. Uh, possibly, yeah, it is possible. Um, if, if you're going to do that, that's fine. And it, in a way, it shows that you sort of, you care a little bit, you know, you want it to work efficiently, you know, perfect that's fine I, I get that but throwing big boulders like that in 
that doesn't suggest care to me um, and all these tiles just thrown on most of them were thrown that 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 corner and this corner here as you saw last week they were piled up uh, but most of them were just thrown in and there's all sorts in here there's glass there's slates there's boulders that that's not that doesn't suggest care to me I think the simple truth is at some point in its history they stopped using this probably last century uh, maybe early last century and they didn't care they didn't care about it then I think maybe this has been re-roofed at some point and at that point they had a load of stuff lying around from other jobs maybe and they just threw it in I don't I don't think it's been placed here with a purpose uh, but maybe we'll never know. Anyway, I think uh, I'm going to carry on. I'll, I'll put the camera down now. I'll just rake over this to see if I can find anything else. And that's uh, hopefully, you know, it's it's just improved it slightly. It's helped it. And hopefully now there's no danger of it collapsing. And we can maybe think about uh, getting in, into use at some point. I'd love to get it into use for next year. So... Um, yeah, maybe that's the aim next year. It's going to be one hell of a pizza party. <laughs> I thought I'd just quickly show you this that I found. Um, I'm assuming it's a ridge tile. It's uh, semicircular in shape. Uh, this lovely diagonal or diamond shaped uh, finial. And this tile has a slot in it, which is uh, dovetail shaped. So it's triangular. So it won't go in from the top there it'll only slide in and then obviously the next one would go on there so I'm assuming uh, this would have been along the top of the roof the ridge um, yeah that's neat that would have looked quite pretty a whole row of those I assume that's where they're from but this is the only one I've found of each of them So where have these gone? Hmm. I can't believe all these tiles were on top of the bread oven roof and the weight, they are so heavy, I'm surprised it hasn't collapsed. And these, I don't know why they were in there because I think these are from the old kitchen um, and they're similar to the ones in the boot room. But they obviously took all the floor up in the on the old kitchen so I don't know where the others are. Maybe they broke. But um, we can probably use these to replace some of the broken ones in the boot room because there's not enough for the kitchen. So I've just cleaned these and I'm going to take them into the boot room to have a look. Um, that's a different thickness to that one and for some reason it's got a band across there. I don't know what that is but um, they're not particularly dirty actually because they've been in the bread oven for so long. But we're going to have a look in the boot room.
um, this one is smaller than that one um, so that could have come from here they've filled this area in with concrete so I don't know if we can get that out and put these in well, I think this one may be from the kitchen but they're all different sizes because they're handmade that fits there actually as you can see some of these are cracked but we're not going to mess about with them I like the character of it and the history so we'll leave them as they are now as we come out the boot room this is the beginning of the ancient kitchen floor and we have some tiles here and the rest is all concrete for some reason. I don't know why they took the floor up but um, we might leave these in here. I don't know what we're going to do in here but the floor has got to be redone because it's maybe up to seven centimetres difference in height in some areas. But they're all higgledy piggledy. Um, this threshold here, we're actually going to chop out. So we'll need some tiles to fill in this bit here, because this is really potentially a trip hazard. So we'll do something with the bottom of the door to fill that gap. It's slightly higher there, but we can slope that. So we get these. The rest of these tiles cleaned up over the next few weeks. Um, there's, a, there's a fair bit of concrete here they've put in, so if we could get that out and replace them, that'd be good. So Charlotte's gone back now to the UK, but before she went, she had a bit of a rummage round in the attic and went through one of the armoires. So we'll show you some bits from that. We did um, do a bit of filming together up there, but we had a bit of a technical issue, so we lost that footage. But we've still got some that she did, so we'll have a look at that. So if we come up the stairs, we can see Rolf's handiwork here as he continues to sand down the um, plaster to reveal the granite. That's the window they found. Coming all the way up. And again, we have some um, lovely original tiles that seem to be different throughout the home in every single room, which is a lovely feature. Now, as we get to the top of the stairs, again, you'd think that perhaps this was just a storage cupboard. If we open it, I think there's a lock down here. continues but this time with wooden stairs another latch I'm sure you've seen this attic many times with mum and Rose having a good old clear out and sort through so again, they've stored um, some of their own things up here. Um, lots of items they've found, lots of chairs and beds, bed frames. So look at that view. Another beautiful day in France. That's the water garden you can see down there with their potage to the left. And the outbuildings. But it certainly does let some light back in. Um, I think they showed you this room here. They found lots of old papers. And I think this was... Um, thought to be like a maid's quarters or something and um, big old wardrobe another boarded up window there 
box full of trinkets. Everything looks grey just because it's covered in dust. Some more old bottles. I don't think they're full. But all the bottles here I think um, were handmade so we do want to keep them. come through. This is another immense space. This could um, be a rather large self-contained apartment. Got a treasure chest there and another one. A huge old solid beam at head height. I need to um, duck under that one in a tile that I just tripped over. Another chest, another bed frame, and a really old buggy. That would have been beautiful in its time. And I think that's um, the canopy for a carriage. And a Moses basket, I think. A really cool wonky beam and another window. This is out um, into the neighbours. There are properties beyond. I don't think we can see the other chateau from here. So I'm going to grab a torch. And I'm going to come and go through some of these chests. Um, but also, if we come into this room here, there's another wardrobe and it is packed full of belongings. So I've come to this wardrobe in particular because it's absolutely um, stacked full of personal keepsakes. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go from top to bottom and just take out everything um, and anything that I think is um, of particular importance um, I'll put in the pile and then get Mummy Wells to come and have a look with me. So obviously just storing some spare lampshades and things. They seem to, um, what I've found in these houses, and I know um, other chateaus, um, people have mentioned that they seem to have stored everything. The, previous French owners, like they never throw anything out, they never donate anything, anything that is no longer wanted or used, they pack it up and they put it in the attic um, and then it gets forgotten about. Now when I had um, a quick look up here yesterday, I found this um, <laughs> and I was trying to figure out what it was and I, my eyes were drawn to the word explosible here. Um, and I physically jumped because having read a little bit more about the SS and how nasty they were, um, I've read stories of where they would rig booby traps in properties after they left for the occupants to find and um, unfortunately uh, come to their demise. But um, yes, yeah, so when I picked this up, I saw <laughs> I saw a metal object and a pin, what could have been a pin, an explosive. And I I freaked out a bit, but um, it's actually lamp, it says lamp essence, inexplosible. Um, and it lasts for 15 hours. So I assume that it's for a lamp, it's fuel, and it lasts for 15 hours. Um, I don't know whether it's empty or not, but I'm gonna kind of keep that to the side because I never trust the words inexplosible. Thermal. Thermal made in France. Some more lampshades. Another broken ornament looks like something praying, but there's no top or bottom. Even things like this, they seem to um, hold on to, and things that we found in the 
kitchen attic, uh, broken crockery. Um, they don't throw it away. Looks like um, that's a lock. So that would have gone over something with a with a lock in it like this. That's really nice. It's quite ornate. I'm not sure what that would have come off of. And it's a really cute kind of um, heart shaped padlock. Wow, can you hear how crunchy they are? An old bag here. Okay, so this is a satchel. I think it's leather, it looks leather. And there's something inside, a few things inside. Um, that's a French map. I think it's parts of France actually, it's that they, they all fit together because Belgium here in the corner. And then some little cutouts of just pictures. And um, there's one here of uh, Pluto. It's very sweet. I think this was like a little school satchel or just a children's, um, children's bag. What it says, uh, exercises, not oh, arithmetic. So it's a little, little maths book. This is another very kind of thick, heavy leather satchel. Um, ah, look, it's got some writing in here. Jean-Pierre Servant. So that's the boy's name. And his address, Courange Toisse. Uh, looks like there's something scribbled out. I don't know whether this was passed down to him from somebody else in the family. It's a box of things here. Looks like lots of um, jewellery boxes they kept, but we haven't found anything with jewellery in this. It tends to be a box kept for other little trinkets, just to keep them safe. A little leather purse. little purse like a like satin or something that's really sweet it's a brooch made out of um, flowers uh, the petals are um, attached together with a really fine metal that's really pretty shoe boxes and really beautifully made years ago. Really soft leather. Well looked after. Very petite little kitten heel. Really cute vintage style. And nice leather with a tassel and a buckle. It still has a strong scent to it. One's called Over the Windmills by Margaret Bresch. But there's another called Piccadilly Gym, uh, where the strange roads go down and down river, and I think the rest are French. That would be really good to um, to have a look on the internet for the. English titles. I thought I'd give you a little update on uh, something that Charlotte filmed in her first uh, uh, Chateau Diary, as we've been calling them. Uh, you remember, this is the back of the boot room door um, with the SS soldiers' signatures on. Uh, but I wanted to give you an update on what we now believe the significance of this red paint is. Um, 
Suze and I have never really given it too much thought. We just thought maybe somebody was trying out some red to see if they liked it, you know, like a sample or something, but we weren't really sure. Uh, Charlotte suggested maybe somebody had painted over something deliberately, uh, which is a possibility. But uh, we had a comment this week from a gentleman called James. And I've got three thank yous to do to James. Uh, first of all, for his comment, which I'll tell you about in a moment. Uh, but the second thank you is uh, he bought some coffees this week. Uh, so thank you, James. It's very kind. And I know James has recently discovered the channel, so hopefully he's enjoying it. Um, and he also decided to become a patron this week. So third thank you. Thank you, James. Um, and James is an ex-military man, and he was suggesting that a red on a door or a chest or something like that is usually an out of bounds sign in the military. Uh, so don't pass through here. So this may have been a message to the younger soldiers, the conscripts, no access to the house, so do not pass. Um, and that makes sense. So that's what we think this is. Um, and thank you, James, for letting us know that. So Charlotte showed you through this doorway and up into the attic. So we think uh, possibly the attic was used as some sort of dormitory for, for the soldiers. And so they would have been allowed access up here, but no further. That red paint would have signified that. Well, Charlotte uh, ran out of time to complete her filming on that. She had to go back to the UK. So we thought we'd bring uh, one or two of the items down just have a look for ourselves if nothing else and to show you and Susie's grabbed one of the handbags one of <laughs> one of many bags we've got and this is what half of what we've got up there or mm, yeah probably. so there's quite a lot of them plus shoes plus shoes plus perfume bottles and all sorts of things um, so we thought we'd just put some leather renovator on one of these bags to see how it comes up because they're not in bad condition are they they've just been left in the dust for a long mm. time but they, that seems to be cleaning up quite nicely very dried out yeah and i'll take a photo of this so you can see this is the um <laughs> the little oil lamp that charlotte uh, saw the word explosable on and uh, thought it was an unexploded <laughs> bomb <laughs> i think it gave her a bit of a shock it's just a little base of an oil lamp uh, but I'll take a photo of the writing on there and put it on the screen. Um, we've got a little uh, compact here, makeup. It's um, leather as well. It's leather, uh, so it's a nice red leather. Um, there's no marks on it, no manufacturer or anything, but uh, I'm not an expert on makeup compacts. So, And there's a, a wallet here which has the initials of, um, which has the name J.P. Savant. And that's the gentleman we bought the house from. So this is obviously his wallet. Um, yeah, okay. And there's a ticket, three enfants, three children, uh, 1959. So, without my glasses, I can't quite read that, but Maybe that's a cinema ticket or a train ticket or mm. something. But 1959. Uh, so I'll put that back in there. But the, um, the actual wallet's quite nice. It's embossed. It's a leather wallet. Let me put a bit of wax Yeah, in. it's quite nice. I'll take a photo of it and put it on the screen. Uh, so yeah, we've got quite a lot of these bags. There's... Uh, we have checked, there's nothing in any of them, apart from the odd ticket or whatever. No valuables. Yes, that, that armoire in the attic, um, we, we've had, we had a cursory glance at it when we first arrived, but never really delved into it. Um, so Charlotte's seen more than we have, actually, and I still haven't really had a proper look through it. Uh, but she's left a lot of the things on the floor up there in, in some sort of order, so we can um, maybe sort through it all. Um, but it's it's what to do with all this, isn't it, really? Mm. Yeah, That's like a little silk purse. Yeah. So we'll, as we go through that, we'll we'll bring a few more pieces down and show you over the next few weeks.
Um, this, um, this is some kind of animal skin. Yeah, I'm not too uh, keen on that. It's worn away a bit. Yeah. But uh, they're all leather, a lot of them. And quite nice, they're of their day, vintage. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll carry on cleaning one or two of these up, shall we? Hmm. And so, uh, thank you to everybody for watching. Uh, Charlotte's back in the UK now. We've caught up with her footage, so back to normal, I'm afraid. And uh, thanks to everybody who subscribed. We've had a lot of new subscribers over the last couple of weeks. And thanks to all of you who've bought coffees. Um, and things off our wish list. And things off our wish list, which you will see very soon. Uh, plasterboard, etc. We, uh, we've got to start boarding Insula in there. Insulation. So we're going to be doing that in the next week or two. Getting winter ready. Getting winter ready, because it's beautiful. It's September yeah. now, but it's absolutely glorious. The but nights are drawing in a bit, it's, and it's, it's getting a little bit chilly. In <laughs> it's going to start getting cold, so we need to start um, shoring up the place. It's so. easy to forget to forget how cold it was last winter when it's hot like this yeah but don't forget it's it an suddenly, adventure suddenly changes <laughs> it's an adventure <laughs> you said to me last year don't worry it won't be like that next winter <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs>